Sang4 single sign-on configuration. IAM will combine the authentication system to identify the username. IAM will synchronize the login process to get the user identity for purpose access control and reporting. After all, any user will not require to type the username and password again for the IAM. It also supports wide range of the server platforms such as Microsoft AD Domain, PPPoE, Radiance, POP3 and many other else. Here we look for the simple case study. IAM was being deployed as a bridge mode. It's under 192.200.19.0.4 network and directly connected to the outside router as a gateway. User computer and AD server also locate under the same network with the IAM. All local users are required to log in to the sf.com domain. IAM have to configure SSO to collect the login credential to complete the login authentication. To configure SSO in the user environment, we have to follow the step below. First of all, user can create an external authentication server to collect some basic information of the domain user. After that, we can start to configure the single sign-on for the Microsoft AD domain. Basically, there are three different methods will be covered in the breaker, which are domain SSO agent, integrator window authentication, and the SSO script. Beside that, we add the authentication policy in order to specify the user with a certain IP address range. Those users have to pass through the process SSO before access outside internet. Lastly, the SSO script will be the optional choice, which will be increase the subset range of the SSO authentication. Now we log in to the IAM with the 192.200.19.176 IP address and the IAM was being deployed as the bridge mode. After this, we can proceed to the online user and check the current authentication method for all users. We can see there is only one open authentication will directly take IP address as the username. Now we can move to the authentication category and the external authentication server to create a new LTAP server. And simply rename it as a sf.com and specific the IP address where the AD server locate, which is the 192.200.19.9. In case to have P range import the user information, we have to enter the administration account under the sf.com domain. After I fill in up the username and password, I can select the base DM inside the sf.com and I will select the user common name under sf.com. After that, user can also text the validity of their setting. We can search any existing account for the sf.com. For example, the tag is one of the normal user account. So the result shows the account is valid. The remaining stuff will be about the synchronized auction, which specifies what object group will be synchronized in the IAM and the advanced auction. So I will skip it and user can test it by your own. Once we finish the configuration, we can see that the online user will add in the new user group, which is our sf.com domain. To get more information, we can move to the local user.
Now we can continue to our main purpose, single sign-on. User can see there is a list of the category available in the. However, we will only focus on the MS AD domain, so we enable for it. The first one is the domain script, which requires each user PC to execute the login script. The second option is the SSO agent. It will analyze the event log generated by the each user or they're trying to log in to the AD server. The third option is the integrated window authentication. It's a new feature available in the IAM, which requires IAM join the domain in the AD server. In period firmware, it may require client to execute the SSO agent software in another PC. The new 11.0 version removes the need of it, so we can directly enable it in the IAM. So we add a new domain controller. First of all, we have to enter the DNS server and the domain name for it. If there is a DNS entry can found from the DNS server, it will directly resolve it to the correct IP address. However, I will manually configure as IP 192.200.19.9. Next, we have to enter the emulation account which able to help IM to connect the event log for the user login. After that, we can text the validity and the result show is valid. Now, the new domain controller was being created. So we can proceed to the next option, IWA. So here is the configuration guide, user can refer it for more details. However, we have to specific the computer name of the IAM. Then it will combine the gateway ID for the new entry add in the DNS server. After that, specify the domain name that IAM need to join. Of course, we have to enter the DNS server that add the new DNS entry point to the 2.3.4.5 outside internet. Next, you require to prepare a single account from the AD server that being used to join domain. Enter the domain account and register and fill up the password. Every single account in the SF.com should be worked successfully. After that, we can text another normal user a privilege account. The result was successful. Now we can commit the result and set the current configuration. After the IWF finished the process, the new entry should be added in the DNS server. So we can open the DNS manager to check the content inside. In here, we could see a new entry is was being added in the DNS server which is the combination of the computer and the gateway ID it is also point to the 2.3.4.5 outside network so every single traffic will also pass through the IAM before forward out to the internet then the IAM can track the username pass through the and achieve the purpose of a single sign-on Now we move back to the IAM to con continue the configuration. According to the process, we still need to add the authentication policy to authenticate all internal users with the single sign-on. So we can proceed to the authentication policy and add a new rule for it. 
So we have to specify the range of the IP address from the 192.200.19.1 until the 192.200.19.254. Next, we should select the SSO as the authentication method for this rule. However, user may notice that there is some option available in the button. This option will be activated only user failure to authenticate with the SSO. So we can simply select the open authentication and take the IP address the username. Afterward, we will leave all other options as a default and commit the result. At last, we can move back to the online user tab to identify the authentication status of all internal users. We can notice there are two accounts binding with the SSO authentication. The second one is the IAM being logged in with the administration account. Another endpoint is the random PC logged in with the text account. Before the end of the breaker, I would like to show you how to establish the single sign on with the login script. We have to make change to the default group policy. First of all, we have to access the start menu, administration tools, group policy management. So we can find the SF domain is over here. Then we can right click and edit for it. And it will redirect us to the group policy management editor. After that, we can look for the user configuration and the following window setting. In here, we can find both log on and the log off script. So before we add the log on script to it, we can look where the location that log on script store. So I already copied the log on script over here in before. Else user have to manually get the log on script and place in this folder. So now we continue to add the parameter. In here we just simply browse for the file just now. After that, add in the necessary parameter. The first value we have to enter the IAM IP address, which is the 192.200.19.21. After that, the second value will be the listening port, which is the 1773. And the third value is the share key, 123. After all, we can apply the change for it. Now we can get back to the IAM. However, we have to enable the log on script over here. After that, enter the same share key we and commit the result. Then the SSO script should be worked. That's all for my tutorial.